What's up, you guys? Scott here. So as you can imagine, one of the most common questions I get is, Scott, what should I be doing each day to build my coaching and therapy business? Like, what should I be doing? What actions should I be taking to get new clients, to grow my business? What social media stuff should I be doing? And should I be doing various things to grow my business? So in today's video, based on the last response I had, and it was an incredible response of showing you guys the Facebook Live script. If you haven't checked that out, guys, I'll leave that below in the comments. And this was actually a video that I took out of my 100K coaching program. So you guys got to see really what we teach in our 100K coaching program. But I gave you guys that script for the perfect Facebook and Instagram Live. I'm going to do the same thing today, guys, and I'm going to break down my entire schedule because they're breaking down what I do each and every day in order to find clients for my coaching business can actually be replicated in some sort of therapy business as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, guys. You guys are going to get an actual video again from the 100K coaching program showing you what to do at 9 a.m. all the way till 9 p.m. If you want to work 12 hours a day, I'll show you all the stuff that I do and you can replicate this perfectly into your therapy and coaching business regardless of how long you've been in the industry for. And I think the most important thing to realize with any sort of business, guys, is how you view your business. We are big on systems, and I'm big on seeing your business as systems, as small individual parts that all work together to achieve one goal, which is to grow the business and get clients. And a schedule, instead of relying on motivation or having to watch Tony Robbins videos every day, understanding your schedule, but also developing some sort of discipline that you stick to this schedule each and every day is going to be one surefire way that you win in this industry. So let's dive into it, guys. Let me show you my framework of what I do each day, the thinking around my schedule, and then I'll break down exactly what I do each day to get clients into my coaching business. So guys, let's go. All right, guys, so welcome to this video. So what we're going to do in this very special video is I'm going to give you a breakdown of my complete schedule. Now, while I was putting this together, I realized that this has become so unconscious for me, where it's almost like my business runs through a framework instead of a schedule. Now, a schedule still means that I do stuff at a specific time. But it's more my thinking of what's happening in the background that really allows me to get so much done. I think for a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of business owners, they really underestimate how much fucking time they have per day to do everything, regardless of whether you're still seeing full-time clients, regardless of whether you're doing full-time CGAs all day. I think once we really isolate where your time-wasting activities are, you'll find you'll have a lot more time to do the things that matter. I'll also say this, guys. I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend. not engaged. don't have kids. I'm very introverted. I spend... A pretty much every waking hour sitting in front of my laptop. Not, you know, for number one, I love doing this. This is what I adore. I wake up excited for this, but I don't do anything else. I find everything else quite boring and quite bland. So what I'm about to show you is just my way of doing things. Now, I'm not saying you have to sit in front of your laptop as much as I do. You have to include family time, time with kids, holidays, date nights, all that stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. Now, in the future, if I have a girlfriend and something changes in my life, whatever it is, um, obviously I'm going to put that into my schedule. But my point here is it's a little bit strange is I schedule everything. I even schedule what food I'm going to eat each day because I've so I guess you could say a bit of a control problem, but I find control gives me a lot of harmony inside of my mind where I know what I'm doing each day. And I pretty much do the same thing each day. I pretty much eat the same thing each day. I try and do the same thing at the same time every day. That's just me. It might be a bit of, bit of overkill, but that's just how it is. So I want to give you guys my complete schedule plus the framework that I have in my mind when I'm thinking about what to do each day. So let me show you what this looks like. And knowing very soon, as I've said many, many times now, some of the content and the CGAs I've had you guys start we can't do that um, just on our laptop. We've got our phone to be able to do this as well. So I will be recording myself on my phone showing you how to do all that, but that's a pretty easy process. So let's stay here. Let's spend some time here. And I really want to explain how this works because this really is the uh, golden piece of the puzzle when it comes to growing a business. And okay, it's the same schedule I created when I had my therapy business. Same thing now in my coaching business. It's just exacerbated a lot in my coaching business because there's more stuff going on. Okay, what you will notice no mindset stuff, no affirmations. I don't visualize. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm not saying you can't. Please put it in your schedule, but I just don't. That's why I don't see it here. What you see here is what I do each day. Okay, so here we go. So my complete schedule. The only thing that changes in my schedule, aside from like any emergency or something like that, that takes obvious precedence is a strategy call. If someone books a strategy call while I'm about to set up for a Facebook Live and they book it in, that strategy call comes first. Okay, Facebook Live can come later. 
as I mentioned, when we get to week four, your VA will do the majority of these CGAs for you. So that's to come. But I'll in this video, I'm going to replicate the schedule as if I was doing it myself. Okay, so a lot of this stuff my VAs do, but I'll just act as if I'm doing it all myself. Included also are my personal activities. Okay, when we get into week four, I'm going to show you how your environment and what you do personally outside of business will affect the business as well. So we'll get into that schedule as well and making a priority for your health and things like that as well. So as you can see, my schedule is rigid and everything has its place. It's robotic, but gives me control. A lot of my friends and family that know I run this schedule think this is boring. How could I live this sort of life? But if it wasn't for me sticking to this, I wouldn't have success. That's the bottom line. They are interconnected. I don't have success because I have a schedule. I have a schedule because it makes success. Okay. Now I've got my diary open where I can, someone can book a strategy call in me uh, with me. It starts at 9am. The last call is that's actually 6pm and I actually have that six days a week. Okay. Uh, I try and have Sundays off, but that doesn't always work because I find sitting around doing no some, nothing is quite boring, but that's what it is. That's the framework. Okay. Let's look at the keys to success. Now I do something called boil my kettle exercise. And what this really represents um, is each piece of content, as you guys will see on my phone very soon, is shared across all social media platforms. Probably thinking, Scott, you've told me that a million times, but guys, please remember that. And I repeat the same thing each day. I can do more uh, in my social media and my content uh, than most people do in their entire day. And I can get it done within the space of boiling my kettle. And I'll show you what that looks like. So when it comes to the strategy call post, I mentioned before, I sent, we send out the strategy call post on the 1st and the 15th of the month. So it's the first day of the month, that's the first post we do for the day. 15th of the month, let's say it's on a Thursday. Thursday morning is the first post I do for the day. If you remember back at the start of this week, we talked about proposals where we collect all the people that have said no or didn't get back to us. We send out a last, last ditch effort proposal. That gets done on the 30th, automatically goes out. Okay. So in week three, when I talk about YouTube, I'll talk about scheduling your YouTube videos. So how it works for me now is I have pre-recorded YouTube videos are scheduled to go live at 4.45 a.m. four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Sometimes if I've run out of time to create four videos, I do all of this on Sunday. I create all my videos on Sunday. Um, I can only get it live for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But my point here is that if I sacrifice some time on my quote unquote day off, it's something that's done for me when I wake up at 4.45 a.m. So let's say, for example, I woke up and I was sick on a Monday morning and I couldn't do any work. I know the video that I scheduled the day before is going to be enough to keep things going. That's the way I think. What can I sacrifice now that can help me later on in case something happens? Okay. Next is outreach conversations, which I'm going to show you guys with the uh, organic outreach. Okay. Um, it happens organically, which, make, which means that I make them a priority. In the next video, we'll get into the whole outreach system. Now I've got some content going on. The goal is to book a call from these conversations as soon as possible. So I try and keep these conversations short. I don't let them drag on too often. I want to try and get to the book a strategy call with me as quickly as possible. All content, videos, posts, announcements are created from keywords and questions from the group, which I showed you guys. I never think I go hunting instead. Remember the priority of content and what you should do instead of something else. So remember, I gave you the list of what I recommend comes priority first, which is testimonials. The last thing is like uh, announcements and things like that. That's the priority you have. If I'm thinking about what should I do when, I've just created a priority inside my schedule. Okay. Big one, consistency is key. Even if you fuck up everything else, but stay consistent, you will win every single time. Consistency, I'd say, is 99% of the time the big issue. It's my observation that scheduling everything, even my personal time. Now, if you've got kids and date nights and things like that, days off, which I understand, I don't have those things. I nearly said I don't have those problems, but you see my point. Please, guys, schedule them in. Now, if your husband or wife isn't quite sure, doesn't want to stick to that, just try and explain it to them. This is going to help your business long term. So try and get them on board with that as best you can. But I understand scheduling is not for everybody. So it is crucial to get control over every part of your business. It may seem weird at first, but it will stop procrastination and time wasting activities. If it's not on my schedule, I don't do it. If it's important, I add it to my schedule. Okay, so I'll give you a real example. Um, my father had actually just gone through with some uh, eye surgery with some cancer that they found around, around on his face and all this sort of stuff. This happened about, well, probably about six weeks ago. He's doing well now. He's doing 100% fine, so don't worry about that. 
But um, he knows based on my schedule um, and he was appreciative of this and respectful of this, that he told me that, hey, can you take me to the doctor's on X and Y date, And he gave me about three weeks notice. And I appreciate him for that because that they know how tight my schedule is. And again, he did the same thing. Yes, they asked me, can you take me back to the surgery for the last checkup? It's in three weeks, here's the date and it's in my schedule now. He would never spring that on me on the day. But again, it's sometimes unavoidable. But again, I just wanna show you how important that scheduling for me is, okay? When it comes down to it, guys, add up your inputs. If you're not getting enough clients, add up your inputs. If you would imagine that each activity, each client getting activity from a post to an announcement, they're worth one point each. The more points you have, the more money you'll make. Any spare time that I have, I double up on a CGA. So let's say I had a call at 9 a.m. and the person doesn't show and my next call is not till 10 a.m. I don't sit around for an hour doing nothing. If I've got a video, if I've already done my first post for the day or even my second post for the day and now it's like five past nine, I had a no show. What do I do in that time? I'm going to make another live do another video, make another YouTube video. I just substitute it for something else. I do not just sit there doing nothing, okay? So Sunday is my only day off usually. And like I said, I record three to four YouTube videos in the morning. I start at about 6 a.m. because I don't like to sleep in. Um, and I set them to a schedule. I'm usually done by about 12 o'clock. And if I'm done by 12, then I can do what I want. I might go to have dinner with my family or something like that. But even then I'd rather be working, but that downtime allows me to sort of decompress. So that's pretty much the frame I run, guys. Very strict, very uh, very rigid, okay? So let me break down as best as I can, guys, uh, what I do each day. Like I said, this is more of an instinctual thing now, and I've sort of had to sort of pick it out of my mind, see what I'm doing, but this will give you some framework around this as well. All right, so 4.45 a.m., like I said, the pre-recorded YouTube video goes live that I've recorded on Sunday, three to four times per week, all recordings done on Sunday, okay? So like even if I was sick, at least I got one YouTube video going up. I don't have to create it on the day. All right, by 6 a.m., remember this is including my personal stuff as well. In week four, I should have had to add this in as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 6 a.m., I wake up, feet on the floor, ready to go. If I'm feeling a little bit tired, um, if you watch the bonus video, I go throw myself in a cold shower to wake myself up. I'm at the gym by 6.45. I live like five minutes away from the gym, which is awesome. Wake up, first post of the day, and I have my coffee. Okay, remember I talked about the boiling kettle thing here? This is where it comes into play. So get up, get myself ready for the gym. Okay. I'll turn the kettle on. And while the kettle's boiling and I'm waiting for that water to boil, I have my first testimonial announcement or my community question. And I post that on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Now, the reason I have something like a testimony or an announcement or a quick question, because it's quick. And I know people are getting up at 6am just in my time zone. I don't, don't can't really schedule things around other people's time zone. Can I do it around mine? I know people are getting up, they're running after kids, they're sitting on the train, they're driving to work. They won't have time to watch a 30 minute video. So I need something quick. And I post it on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube, exactly the way I showed you with all the hashtags. And that alone, I can do all of that. I'll show you my phone later, quicker than it takes to boil the kettle. And I guarantee I've done more work here than most people do in their entire day. Because they're trying to create borders and fancy titles and the right lighting and all this other ridiculous crappy stuff. And they're taking the attention away from the content and looking more at the shiny object thing. Okay. So I do that in the morning, have my coffee at the gym uh, by 6.45. I return home by about 8 a.m., return from the gym, have a shower, ready for the day. It takes five minutes. I don't eat breakfast then or anything like that. Okay. Then I go straight to my diary about 8.15. I'm ready to go. Another coffee in hand, ready to go. I look at my strategy call times, answer any questions in the group, look at email, set myself up for the day. I then move on to, my VA does, but I'll replicate this for me. Go in straight away, add 10 friends from Facebook groups, 20 friends on Instagram, 20 friends on LinkedIn. Again, I've done more work now in the first two to three hours of my day than everybody does in their entire day. We're not even close to being done yet. Symptom hunting, while I'm uh, getting things set up, try and get 10 to 20 new ones per day. Just copy and paste from those groups, as I showed you before. I also send out 10 to 20 outreach messages, Facebook, Instagram based on what I'm about to show you with the, with the uh, uh, outreach message. Sometimes I can only get five, sometimes I can only get 20, but I might be keeping up conversations from the day before. So it's a bit of a juggling act, but again, I'm just taking action. I also track my PayPal. Okay, just to make sure everything's on, on uh, ready to go. 6 a.m., 8 a.m. is done. 9 a.m., I'm either gonna have my first call. If I don't have a call booked in at 9 a.m., I've got two choices here. If the YouTube video that went live, I'll post the actual YouTube link on my Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and I'll eat breakfast at that time. I have breakfast at 9 a.m. 
Um, or I'll do a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live. So what I like to do, if I do a Facebook Live on Monday, I'll do Instagram Tuesday, Facebook Wednesday, and I follow that. Now, I will admit Facebook Lives tend to take less of a priority for me, okay, because I've created all these awesome YouTube videos. I'd rather show that. Um, and sometimes I just literally run out of time. My preference for you guys, like I said, if it gets to 9 a.m., do a live. Do as many lives as you can per day. Just because I'm showing it once here, do two per day, do three per day. Double up everything I'm talking about. Just be very careful with adding friends that you don't send too many uh, at the same time. I mentioned that before. Just try and fill in every gap of your day for the first 30 to 60 days of just constant CGAs. It'll show up later as a lot of sales. Okay, so that's 9 a.m. done. I might do some calls in between that time. I'm having conversations. I've got to sort of um, juggle two or three things at once. So I could be uploading a YouTube video onto Facebook while that's uploading. I'm talking in a conversation on my phone to someone from an outreach message. I'm talking to my VAs. I sort of got to juggle a few things. But again, you get used to that. 12 p.m., 12 o'clock, uh, same post to 6 a.m. What did I do at 6 a.m.? Something quick. So if I did a testimony in the morning, I might do an announcement the next time. I might ask a community question, vice versa. Same, don't have to think about it, two seconds. Now, I might also go back over three weeks ago on my Facebook, find a community question I posted there, post that again, just repurposing my own stuff. 1 p.m., I go back to the gym, do about half an hour worth of cardio just to walk around, just to sort of decompress a little bit, come home, have my lunch, answer any questions in the group, okay? Because I've already posted, you can see I'm, I'm doing something every two to three hours, okay? 3 p.m., same as 6 a.m. If I've done an announcement here, unless I did a testimony at six, at 12, I did an announcement. At three, I'm going to do a community question. I'm just cycle between those three. If I've got a whole bunch of testimonials, I'll just post two or three testimonials per day. 6 p.m., I do a live, try and do it at nighttime, or I upload a raw video, YouTube video, like I showed you guys before, add another 10 to uh, 10. Facebook friends on Facebook, obviously 20 friends on Instagram and LinkedIn. So that's added up for 20 for Facebook, about 40 odd for Instagram and LinkedIn. Do that every day. Okay, have my dinner then, 9 p.m. is the end of the day. Like I said, I've got calls scattered throughout there. I get to the end of the day, might even be a little bit earlier. I look at what I did today, make sure everything got done. Might even add up my strategy calls and go, okay, my goal was to get two. I actually got four today, four new booked ones. Awesome, I did really well. Plan, get everything set up for tomorrow. Have I got anything that's going to break the schedule tomorrow? Start scheduling those strategy calls. Look and see what's going on in my calendar. Track PayPal again. Bedtime. I don't sit there and watch TV. I don't read a book. I just go to bed. Now, I wake up and go to bed at the same time every single day. That's part of that strategy you guys will learn in week four. Because what it's doing, it's helped me control my hormones. It helped me control get to sleep. And it's become a part of my routine. It's become a part of my default settings. I don't have to worry about insomnia. I just go to sleep straight away. I can wake up at the same time, very rigid and schedule. And I repeat this six days per week. So that's pretty much it, guys. It doesn't seem like much, but I'm always doing something, okay? Um, and I'm also okay to sacrifice personal time to do something for the greater good, whether it's for you guys or my program or the success of my company. I might even sacrifice. I'm not saying do this, but I'll sacrifice some sleep time sometimes. I'll sacrifice the gym sometimes. I can catch up with those things later. I'll sacrifice even some strategy calls that I know will turn into paid clients to do, you know, catch up calls with you guys. I know what to sacrifice at the right time. I know how to maintain my own health and do all that stuff, keep myself healthy, drink enough water. I know how to do all that. I basically know what works for me, but this is really the frame of it, guys. Okay. If you're waking up wondering what to do each day, you now have a schedule and I recommend you scheduling absolutely everything that you do. Okay, that includes your personal stuff, the CGAs, but that's what it looks like. Now, you do this time and time and time again, day after day, week after week, month after month. I guarantee if you did this for 12 months straight, you would get more done in that 12 months, have more success than most therapists and coaches. I'll even take out the word most, pretty much all therapists and coaches will have in their entire career. Remember back in week one, I told you what they did. They do something for like a week, doesn't work, they give up. Go do something else for a week, doesn't work, give up. That's what they do. But if you stay consistent and stick to this thing like an absolute psychopath and make this become the way you act, feel, think about business and what you do every day, you will win every single time and you'll get better and better and better and more efficient. So what would normally take me in the past half an hour to create a YouTube video, 
I can now do the exact same video in 10 minutes. So you get better over time. The more you do it, the more competency you have. It's like driving a car. First time you drive, it's, it's really hard. The more times you drive it, now you can do what I do, drive, drink coffee, listen to music, whatever you want to do in the, in the car without even thinking. All comes down to practice, guys. All right, so that's my schedule. If you've got any questions about this schedule or you uh, need some more advice, post it in the group. Always happy to answer questions about the schedule. But guys, we're setting everything up. Uh, moving on forward, we're going to start looking at the organic outreach system. We'll also look at, I'll get my phone out and show you how to use your phone apps for this as well. But we'll also move into client contracts, getting all that set up to uh, give your contracts to your clients. But guys, let's keep on going on a roll here. I'll see you in the next video.